The one advantage of arriving here last night is that the rising sun has peeled back the veil on one of the most incredible landscapes I've ever taken in, and we have been across every corner of South Africa. It's difficult to believe that we are just a stone's throw away from the garden route. Looking at this perfect setting, it's also very difficult to understand how a lion population of well over 100,000 could have been reduced to close to 32,000, and that's an estimation in just two decades. We are trying to track down some lion cubs, maybe the first born in the Southern Cape in over 150 years, which is an incredible sign for the species and a very lucky day for me. Gondwana Game Reserve's lioness kept her newborns well hidden for the first few weeks. Two cubs were born last year in November and another three in January. The lions spend their afternoons in an area of the reserve called Pride Rock. I think one of the most unbelievably beautiful lions I've ever seen. Tell me a little bit about the family dynamic here. Then the dynamic has changed considerably since we released the male and the females. We um, had to bond them. They originally come from the Kalahari. Um, we did that with purpose because the Cape lion most resembled the Kalahari black-maned lion. Since then, we've encouraged the bonding process, and since then, this is uh, the result of the bonding. But clearly the, the bonds are there, clearly the family unit is very solid. How long has it taken you to get to this point? What sort of a road have you been on? We released the, the adults in 2008. Um, male we brought in just before the females. Um, so we've had, we've had the lions now for about four and a half years. And uh, originally that didn't, um, there was no breeding going on. And um, only last year, 2012, did uh, the first two cubs, Ringo and Star, the two males, the ones that uh, seem a bit bloated there from a kill that they made last night. Um, they came in first, and then early in this year, January 2013, we had another three, what seems to be possibly females, female cubs that were born. The reproduction of this species is reassuring. It indicates that the lions have settled in well. Growing the biodiversity of the reserve is central to Gondwana's wildlife management plan. The 11,000 hectare reserve is a haven for many species. I've just met the newest members of the Lion Pride. They are gorgeous. You must be over the moon. Yeah, we are. I mean, it really is a milestone for us and for the game reserve that we now can sustain a, a growing lion population. Um, it's been sort of seven years in the making. And, um, you know, when we initially came and, and, and looked at this land and looked at establishing it into a game reserve, you know, we had to look at lots of different factors, you know, what's the carrying capacity, what's the rainfall like. I was more looking at the views and the fane boats, but, um, you know, all of those played a big role in establishing, establishing this into a place that people want to come and experience nature in. The Protea, one of the over 2,000 species of fanebors that are specific to this area alone. Another reason to take note of the kind of conservation that's happening here. And as you can see, it goes on for miles. Smaller wonders like the Cape Sugarbird and Orange-Breasted Sunbird can also be seen on the reserve. The conservation work being done here was rewarded when Gwandana won the judges' vote as South Africa's leading nature experience for 2012. The real reward, however, would be to see the lions thrive and form their own prides. You know, I think for once I might actually be out of superlatives. Every box is ticked, from conservation to wildlife studies to an unmatched setting to an unbelievable tourist experience. Surely we have to support people that are breaking new frontiers like this. Go and find your heroes out there. Every new partnership that we form makes ours a culture of conservation, one that is befitting this unbelievable wild gift that we've been given. <laughs>